But now, after all of that, we finally get to the new instalment of the franchise, Episode 7, The Force Awakens. And what did I think about it? I thought it was good. I thought it was really good. I hesitate to call it fantastic or amazing, or go completely head over heels in love with it like I know a lot of people have. And while it is very entertaining, and I definitely thought it was better than I thought it could have been, there are some things about it that I'm a little bit... How do I put this? A little bit shaky on. But let's get down to the stuff that I actually did like first. As with any element of the Star Wars franchise, John Williams does his damnedest to provide a fantastic soundtrack for the movie. Which he does. And like the prequels, they do borrow from the original cues a little bit, and obviously reuse the original music quite a bit. But it's awesome, so that doesn't really matter anyway. The music in this movie is absolutely stellar and really enjoyable, and really makes it feel like a true Star Wars movie. The effects are actually really, really good. There's a really good mix of CG and practical effects in more of what the prequels probably should have done. They really only use CG on things that they really couldn't do with practical effects that wouldn't have taken ages or a lot of money to do. And while admittedly some of the element of practical effects does look tad too awkward. There are some parts that do really really look good and they did a really good job on with using practical effects and of course CG has evolved a lot since the early 2000s so it looks a lot better than it did in the prequels. The cinematography and set design is really good too and really takes advantage of what it can do with modern technology whilst also again mixing in some practical elements without just having the entire movie shot in front of a green screen like the prequels did. And it really does feel like they've tried to recreate the feel of the original Star Wars in the way it looks as best as they could. The action scenes are absolutely spectacular, they're really good, they're really well paced, there's a lot of action and tension, and they actually utilise elements of the Star Wars lineage and lore about uh, certain bits of technology and the way the Force works that they hadn't previously used before. And of course, while the three-headed lightsaber thing was a bit controversial, though I personally have no problem with it, it did actually get uh, some good use from actual practical reasons within combat in the movie. So if you're going in for a good, high thrill, exciting time, you'll definitely get it here. And one thing I was a tad cautious on, but I'm glad that those fears weren't expounded upon, is that the new characters are fantastic. There's basically two of them now, not counting the droid, though he's entertaining in his own way. You get Finn and Rey. They are really, really good characters. Finn is this really nice, golden-hearted, reluctant character. I won't give away what his character actually is, but he's really, really enjoyable and you like watching him. And Rey, when I first saw her, I was a bit concerned that she was going to be a bit too much of a dull action movie chick. But no, she's got a really good personality and you really grow to like her. And what is really good about any action hero, regardless of gender, is that they show them being vulnerable. That's the key of making an action hero seem interesting when you show them not being able to be perfect which makes us want to see them get over their imperfections even more and make them root for them more so I really really like the new characters and I actually in many cases found them a bit more entertaining than the older characters but the older characters are still great to see nonetheless but the best thing about this movie is that it truly feels like a modernized Star Wars film this actually feels like a Star Wars movie told in the modern day Day. and of course the actual story actually feels like it's taking place about 50 years after the last one. This is definitely something that deserves to be called an element of the Star Wars franchise and is definitely something that I think most fans would be able to get along with. But as I said nothing's perfect and there were some bits in the movie that I didn't quite agree with. The main thing for me that I noticed throughout watching the movie is that it seems to have a story that retraces the steps of episode 4 a little bit too closely. It's a little hard to go into this without giving away spoilers or giving away too much details, but trust me that when you go in you'll definitely notice at least some moments when episode 4 is tried to be homaged or even just retold. And while that may not necessarily be the worst thing in the world, this is supposed to be a unique and new entry into the Star Wars franchise. 
and I do feel that if you're going to do that you should try and have a story that actually feels like it's something new. Now don't, wor don't worry if it doesn't feel like they're actually continuing the story, it does, but at the same time we want to have a continuous story that shows us more of the Star Wars world and while admittedly the planets they visit are not the same planets they visited before, they do look exactly the same. There's a planet that's not supposed to be Tatooine but looks exactly like Tatooine, so it's just like, why don't you just have it be on Tatooine? And unfortunately, that leads to this movie's biggest problem, a lack of memorability. Now, the movie as a whole, of course, is very memorable. You will remember the movie, and it's definitely something that you'll want to watch again. But, one thing that Star Wars has always had is that it's able to make you remember certain scenes, making those what we call water cooler moments. Even the prequels were able to do this quite well. And just think about it, the scenes of Phantom Menace that you remember, like the scene of Qui-Gon Jinn cutting through the door with his lightsaber, the boat ride, the pod race, the fight at the end, all three of them. They may not have been scenes you enjoyed, but they're at the very least scenes that you remember. Unfortunately, this movie doesn't really have any scenes like that until about halfway through, and even then, a lot of them borrow from scenes that were already in the previous movies. There are some good parts, such as when Han and Chewbacca first show up, that's definitely something that's very unique to this movie. And the last half hour is where it really starts to feel like its own identity, when it really starts feeling like it's doing some new things, rather than retelling the stories of the first movies. The problem is, though, is that it all comes into that last half hour, if they took the way that they did that last half hour and made that the entire movie, I probably would have absolutely adored this movie. But while I'm not saying the fact that it regresses itself from the fourth episode is a bad thing, this is a movie that's supposed to feel like it's a new Star Wars episode. And the unfortunate thing is, it sometimes doesn't. But at the same time, some people who are not quite as die-hard as other people, and to be fair, I'm not the most die-hard Star Wars fan out there, you can probably still find some enjoyment in the fact that it does feel like the fourth episode, and to be quite honest, the familiarity element is probably why so many people like it, and there's nothing wrong with that really, so if familiarity is something you want, you'll definitely get it, and in many cases, that actually did work for it. It's just my own personal element of I wanted this to be more unique, and it wasn't quite that, but familiarity is still something that's quite nice to see. Also something that I wasn't quite sure on throughout the whole movie was the villain. Now I'm not going to say too much about him because again there's a lot revealed about his character, but at first I thought he was really cool because he was a lot more devious than Vader. Vader was always this kind of stoic character. He was actually a lot more diabolical. But as the movie goes on we find that he kind of has the aura of a petulant child and he quite literally throws tantrums quite a lot. Now, to be fair, this is supposed to be a different villain and comparing him to Vader is a bit unfair because he's not supposed to be Darth Vader, he's meant to be a completely different character, which he is, and in some cases he actually really is really good, and in some cases there are some parts where he retreads the steps of Vader, but that's being a bit unfair considering that the way that the villains work in this movie is meant to be like the way they retread Vader and the Empire. But either way, there is definitely a lot to enjoy about this villain, although I wasn't the biggest fan of the way his mask was designed. I understand what they were going for with the mask, but I just feel like there could have been some better design choices in there. Like, say, if they went for what Garen Malick looked like in Force Unleashed after he turned to the dark side, that would have been a really good mask for him. But either way, you'll probably enjoy this villain, and he's not necessarily a bad villain. He is enjoyable. It just I feel that there's something that leads to be desired about him. Also, this movie, it kind of goes on for quite a bit. It's I don't really know how it compares to the original movies, because I don't know how long they were, but this movie does definitely feel like a very long movie. And while I'm not necessarily saying bits that could have been left out of this movie, and there's definitely nothing they could have cut, because despite how I feel about the story, it is all very tightly tied together, and it does feel like all the steps taken are necessary. It just does feel like it goes on for a bit too long. It's like there are some points where you think, well, is the movie going to end now? And it goes on for another hour. But uh, if people want that, then that's perfectly fine as well. I just felt that there were a little bit 
too much stuff thrown into this one movie that probably could have been put into the next episodes or even left it on a massive cliffhanger and that would have probably made people want to go and see the new one even more. But even with that being said, there is a very nice cliffhanger in this movie that will definitely make you want to see the next one. I mean, I'm definitely going to go see the next one, though that's probably just because I'll have to. But either way, it does feel like it prattles on a little bit, but not to the point where it becomes boring or the point where you want to leave early. It just does feel like it goes on for a bit too long than it should do. And lastly, what I have to talk about is the character of Rey. Now, once again, I'm not going to say too much about what her character is, but let's just say that they kind of allude to where her heritage lies a little bit too strongly. And I understand that they'll probably be building up to a big, big plot twist with her character in the next movies. I have a feeling that I might have already figured out what that plot twist is. Obviously, again, I won't say it, but if it actually does turn out to be what I think it is, I wouldn't be surprised. Although at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't turn out to be that, because to be quite honest, I'm not very good at predicting things. But either way, I think they, I think they nail it in a little bit too hard. Now despite what I've said here, I definitely think that this was a good movie and I did really enjoy seeing it. It's definitely something that any fan of Star Wars, or anyone who wants a really good movie going experience, should really go to see. Now I know that there have been some fans coming out of the woodwork to say that this movie has been a bit not like Star Wars, it's been a bit too unlike the original movies, and to be fair I can understand where they're coming from, but to be perfectly honest, I don't think any movie will be able to truly recapture the feel of the original films. I know that's a bit ironic for me to say given what I've been saying about the way that this movie has a story that feels like the originals, and while the original films aren't perfect in and of themselves, the truth is, is that they can't be retold again just like they did the first time. The original Star Wars films are some of the most unique visual audio experience ever to be seen on the mortal plane. At the time they were made, despite the huge amount of inspiration and adaptation that went into them, there was still no film like it, and arguably hasn't been since. I mean sure, there have been rip-offs, clones, and movies that have taken inspiration from it, but no movie has been able to capture the feeling that people get when they watch the originals. And speaking of someone who watched Phantom Menace first and then skipped ahead to Episode 4, I can vouch that even when having prior experiences of Star Wars, you can't get that feeling when watching that movie than when you watch Episode 4 and still feel even after watching it a million times. Trying to recapture the feel of the original movies in its entirety is like trying to catch lightning in a jar in a desert whilst blindfolded and also backflipping off of a horse as trying to beat a Ferrari in a land speed record whilst wearing hooves that are made out of butter and lead. Basically what I'm saying is that the original films are films that were done on the backs of what was essentially filmmaking miracles, and while the prequels went about it in a way that wasn't the best choice, even if they did, I doubt they would have been able to truly feel like the original trilogy. And while I may sound like I'm treating the original films like they're heroin and I'm a smackhead, the point still stands that, while not exactly being films that ascend the mortal plane in their angelic perfection, they are films that no one could ever truly make again, even if it's just through economic reasons on how the budget required to make the effects that they had back in those days just wouldn't be able to happen. Which is a tad tragic, but either way, you can't compare the newer movies to the originals too much, and while it's inevitable that we will in some points, and admittedly I've done it quite a bit in this vlog itself, you can't do a spot the difference style back-to-back -back comparison of the originals compared to the new ones. The times have changed, the industry's changed, the people have changed, and, for better or worse, George Lucas isn't even the writer or director anymore. It's naturally going to be different, though given the way the prequels turned out, they probably would have been even more different, even if he did write and direct. Now, despite what I've said about this movie, I definitely really, really enjoyed it, and I definitely think it was worth seeing, and it really does feel like a Star Wars movie. Anyone who's a fan of Star Wars or just wants a really good movie-going experience should definitely go and see this, and... I'm definitely not alone on this because critics and fans and just the audience in general has been going mad for it. And while admittedly you can obviously tell by my opinions I'm not over the moon for it, I can definitely understand why people like it and I can completely understand. And maybe one day after some reflection I might be there with them as well. After all, I only did just see this movie yesterday so it's been a little bit too early to go into 
deep, deep analysis of it. And as time goes on, my opinions might change. But as it is, I'm still glad that I saw this movie. And with that comes my final and full disclosure on the Star Wars film franchise. Excluding that one, of course. But even then, I've not seen that one, so I can't really talk about it. And quite frankly, I'm glad. But either way, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I apologise for my somewhat more unprofessional delivery in this one, but physical condition and also I'm a bit swamped with other things, but I tried my hardest to get this to you, and I hope it was good. And big thanks to Michelle Scully for being one of the biggest donators on my Kickstarter and thus requesting this review from me. I definitely had some fun doing it, and I hope you had fun watching it. But until the next time, may the Force be with you lot. Always.